So, <coughs> first, a teaser. That's what I'm going to present. We are taking Soil Cloud as it is on the left, with persistent storage and zookeeper coordination, and moving to something like on the right. The local disks are only cache, and the shared storage, for example, S3, is where the index are persisted. So, just to keep you awake, I am Ilan. I work at Salesforce in France. I'm a soil committer and PMC member as well. I have an engineering degree and a PhD in France, uh, computer science, parallel computing. For those old enough, but I think there's nobody here, I wrote the Saracen computer game on Apple II and Commodore 64. I did these versions. And other than working, I do long bike trips, paraglide, drum in a band, and worked as a photographer for this type of event, actually. What are we trying to do here is separating the compute from the storage. And separating does not mean remote storage. So separating means there is no one-to-one -one mapping between the storage and the compute nodes. So EBS is not separation of compute and storage. And the other item, which is kind of related, if you think about it, is we maintain a single copy of each data item, each part of the index, in that shared storage. Uh, I will clarify. Why are we doing that? It's always interesting to have a reason. I work at Salesforce. We host, you maybe heard about Salesforce, a CRM application. Um, <clears throat> very high scale, search is at a very high scale. It might be the highest scale solar installation. <clears throat> Many tenants, and the interesting part about that is that we do not know which tenants are going to grow maybe in a week, because they import data from other systems, which tenants are going to stay dormant for six weeks, or six months, or forever, because they're a demo org that nobody's going to use. And uh, another reason is that we want to run that in a cost-effective way, for business reasons. So, say what, why, and how will be the center part of the presentation later. That project of separation of compute and storage started in 2018 or even a bit before on a homegrown cluster Salesforce was running there and still runs on part of the infrastructure. And there's an Activate presentation. Um, then we switched to uh, Soil Cloud, and we ported these ideas to Soil Cloud, and there's another Activate presentation. And now uh, we shared a branch in January this year, a branch upstream that has uh, all the code that I'm going to present now, except the last slide, which is future work, and that we hope to eventually merge into Solar Cloud, uh, the, the main branch. The plan. All you need to know about Solar Cloud, I do not assume you know anything about Solar Cloud because the terminology can be different. So I will introduce uh, the concept I will be using. Then the middle part of what we did, and then the slide at the end about the future. Terminology. <coughs> um, the thing that people manipulate when they're dealing with Solar Cloud is a collection. You index into a collection and you query a collection. It's a logical concept. And a collection sometimes needs to be partitioned because it's too big or for other reasons. And each partition is called a shard. A shard is a logic concept. It's not something that you can find on disk. On disk, you find replicas. And I call replica any instantiation of a shard, be it leader replica, the one taking rights, or follower replica. It's not really used as follower replica in Solar Cloud, but let's call them follower replica that uh, are a copy of the leader and that do not directly take indexing. Okay. These replicas 
live on nodes, which are the solar JVMs. And usually you want to have one or zero replica of a shard on every node, because if you have two replicas, it's of no use compared to having only one. That's terminology. When an indexing batch arrives on the top, we see it's distributed to replica of three of the shards of that collection. Just that's the case because it happens that in the specific batch here, there were documents that only belong to these three shards or partitions. So no need to forward empty document set to the, to the, green, to the green shard. And we see that it hits uh, the, sh the replica, the shard leader replica of these three shards. These are the replicas that do indexing. But actually what they do is they do indexing on their own local copy of the data. And then they forward the indexing to the follower replicas. Usually they try to forward to all the followers. Um, for durability and I have a next slide. If we look at querying, um, the, the queries usually, not always, but usually they would go to the whole collection because you don't know ahead of time which shards will have the documents that you're looking for. Unless you're looking for documents that uh, match your, your partition, your sharding strategy. But if you know about that, you don't care about what I say here. So the queries are distributed to all to replicas of all the shards. They can be handled by the leader replica or by follower replicas, which might be slightly less up to date, but that's okay. Um, a replica. Um, I, I had a very more complex slide, but if you don't know about Solar Cloud uh, or Lucene, uh, a replica is a set of immutable files. You write the files, you can look at them as a stack, and you don't modify them once they're written. So every time you do an update, uh, uh, a change of an indexed document, or a delete of an indexed document, you just add files. And that would work that way, but you would end up with a lot of files. So there are other operations that are called merge, that take a bunch of files and compact them into a smaller set of files and write them on top of the stack. And then the one that got compacted eventually, later, they can be removed. And that's a way to keep the number of files under control. And these files constitute segments. I try not to say the word segments again during that talk, but these are what they do. Okay, <clears throat> there are three types of replicas in Solar Cloud. I won't name them, but the difference between the replica, actually I will name them, NRT, TLOG, and pool, but it doesn't matter. The, the differences between the replica types in Solar Cloud are on four dimensions what type of data they exchange, uh, do they do index, all of them, or do they just get some data that they use without doing the indexing document processing work? Can they become a leader if the leader dies? And what is the, the guarantees of read after write? Um, these guarantees are very fuzzy with all replica type, but with some they're even more fuzzy than other. This is a solar cloud cluster. <coughs> it's the same diagram I put in the first slide. We have Zookeeper. Uh, <coughs> I say coordination, but Zookeeper does two things in solar cloud. It does coordination. It allows to pick shard leader, we'll see in the next slide. It allows to do coordination within the cluster. It also stores metadata about the cluster, such as where are the collection distributed, uh, which are the replicas of shards, and other things. That's why uh, the disk of Zookeeper goes from green coordination to orange, which is data. And the solar nodes, they have data 
in their orange disks, and they exchange data among themselves when they do indexing and when they do other things that need to move data, move data around. And the data in Solar Cloud, usually, unless you really like risk, live on multiple disks, multiple copies, so multiple replicas, for three reasons. Durability, you do not want to lose your data if you lose a node. Availability, you want to be able to access the data even if the node is down. And load, if you have too many queries for one node to, to serve, you want to, um, to distribute them to multiple nodes. I said that some replicas are shard leader, the leader of the shard, some are followers. So here we have three nodes. The three nodes have the yellow donut replica corresponding to the yellow donut shard of some collection. And there are structures in Zookeeper maintained by Solar Cloud that allow Solar Cloud to do a shard leader election and, and decide in that case that replica two is the leader. And the leader is important. It's on the leader that indexing has to happen because if indexing happens on a replica that is slightly behind, then it's not possible to, to merge two replicas and, and there, there would be data loss if indexing was not done on the leader. And when uh, a node becomes unreachable, for example, node 2 becomes unreachable or goes into a GC, GC pose, um, the, the rest of the nodes might elect another leader. And here, maybe after this snapshot was taken, maybe replica 1 became the leader. And note that maybe replica 1 became the leader, so replica 1 and 3 agree now that replica 1 is leader, but replica 2 might not know about it yet. It's in the GC pose. I'll talk about this later. The limitations of Solar Cloud with respect to our use case of multi-tenancy, unpredictable, etc., is that nodes contain data. So scaling up uh, brings you empty nodes and your cluster that is already loaded, that's why you want to scale up, you have to overload it even more because it has to send data to the new ones. Scaling down is complicated because you need to empty the nodes, otherwise you lose a copy and maybe you want multiple copies for the reasons I said previously. Um, <clears throat> we need the leader elections and Soy Cloud does that leader elections by opening the replicas. So it opens all the replicas on all the nodes all the time. And there is an overhead for every replica that is open. And that limits the number of replicas you can have per node, even if you do not use them at all. That's a problem. That's a big problem for very high scale and potentially very low traffic use cases. <clears throat> Um, updates are done on multiple nodes for durability. This seems to, to be a good thing. It is a good thing. But when you consider public cloud, your drives are much more reliable. For example, EBS has two copies on the AWS side. So when you do your replication, you think I need three copies, but you use three EBS. In fact, you have six copies. So you're, you're, you're doing more copies than you really need. And the code is complex. I don't know who uh, looks at Solar Cloud code, but uh, durability concerns, which one is the most up-to-date, the leader election things, um, all, all this is complex. And when you push solar to its limits, um, there are many failures. So now that's the start of the second part, I'm done with the intro. Uh, those who know Solar Cloud can wake up. <coughs> Same diagram you saw before, and I'm going to explain how we implemented the thing on the right. That seems pretty trivial. What is the challenge? <coughs> I touched on the challenge. When leadership changes, um, the old leader that runs this code, I just copied from my class, uh, while I am leader, I do leader things. 
In Solid Cloud, each node has its storage. That's OK, because when the node 2 was, was no longer a leader, um, he might have thought it's still a leader because it was in, uh, inside the, the block of the while and it was changing its local storage. When it will rejoin the cluster, things will be sorted out. But if that second node can write to S3 and after another node got elected and wrote something to S3, this one emerges from its GC pose and overwrites what the other guy did, we either have data loss or corruptions, and we want to avoid that. It's possibly a very rare occurrence, but a uh, company I work for, uh, every very rare bug happens about twice a week. So we're running into all the issues we imagine, and that's pretty nice. High-level approach of the implementation. <coughs> We introduced a fourth replica type that we called zero. The name explanation is in the next slide. We delegate all the durability concerns to something we call the zero store, which is based on S3 plus the keeper. And we implemented it in a way that prevents data loss and corruption in case of the old leader that does things once it was no longer the leader. And I'm glad we're not in the US because the FBI would be on me here. Uh, the branch, there is a branch upstream. Um, <coughs> so it was a joke about leader election, sorry. The branch upstream that is available, there is a link uh, you get with the presentation. It has about 70 new top level classes that are specific to the implementation and many touch points in the code and, and new tests. So many modified classes as well. The zero name, um, for two reasons. There is zero duplication of the data. We store one copy per shard. Uh, existing abstractions for using remote storage in Solar Cloud, such as HDFS directory that can use S3, as <laughs> the name does not tell, uh, they store one copy per replica. We store one copy per shard. And eventually, we want to get to having no replicas for indexes that are not in use. And that would increase scalability nicely. So the indexing on a single node happy path, how, how, does, the, how does it integrate? So the zero story is what I said, is S3 is the orange or the, it's not S3, it can be GCS, but I say S3 is easier. Um, it's the orange cylinder. Zookeeper points to a file. We'll see the files in the next slide. But point to a file that tells what is the current state of the chart on the shared storage. So the starting point here is um, the blue state of an index. The node receives a batch. And then it either updates itself from the shared storage if it's not up to date, or it is already up to date. And to know if it's up to date or not, it talks to Zookeeper. The arrow does not go to Zookeeper, but it checks with Zookeeper. And here, then the node is up to date, starts with a blue version. Then it does index locally, and it does write the files to the local index. In Solar, it does a commit in Solar uh, terminology. Then it pushes all the files um, it has created locally in a specific way. We'll see in the next slide. It pushes them to the shared storage. It writes a new metadata file describing the new state of that index. And then it talks to Zookeeper and updates the arrow to move from blue to green. Uh, and after this update in Zookeeper, the state of the shard is the new one, the green one. It, it was the blue previously. And something I forgot to mention is that the state of an index in the what we call zero store is the source of truth. If there is any difference between what a node thinks the index is or should be and the zero store, the zero store wins. 
That is an assumption in the code. It makes making decisions relatively simple. Once this has succeeded, as in this diagram, the batch is acknowledged to the client. At the file level in the zero store, in the S3 here, we see Zookeeper pointing to a file that is called shard metadata dot a random suffix. The random suffix is a UUID, but I put three characters. Um, and it points to files. The file have random names as well, with UUID at the end. And it lists all the files that are part of the index at this point in time. So if a new replica were to grab that index from here, it would first take the shard metadata MNO file and then go fetch all the other files, write them locally with their appropriate name, there is a mapping of the names, and it will have the index. Then when the indexing pushed its data, it pushed a new file, referencing all the old files that are still needed in the new version of the index, and writing a new one, the file 8, with a new random suffix. And then look at the power of Google Slides, the suffix changes uh, from the previous one to the new one, and, and now uh, the green is the new version of the index. Okay, now this is the fundamental slide of how we solved the issue of, of having potentially multiple leaders, quote unquote, updating the same state, the same single copy on the shared store. You saw that <clears throat> I said that the files have random names. I, I, all the files have random names. It means any write to the S3 or to the zero store cannot overwrite any previous write because that random UUID is always different. So we have two nodes that hold two replicas for the same shard. And for some reason, maybe the old leader and the new leader, they both do indexing at exactly the same time. So they both receive batches. And note that the shared store, the zero store, sorry, um, is in the blue state. They both receive batches. They both update themselves to the blue version if that's not already the case. So they're both starting with the blue. They're both doing indexing locally and writing the files to their local disk that is used as a cache. They both push their versions to the zero store. So we see the green that we know from the previous and the red one. And then there is a race now. Both of them cannot succeed because there would be data loss of what the other did. So there is a conditional update, which is a kind of in Zookeeper, you update a value only um, if it has a certain version that you, you know about. And here, think of it, um, <clears throat> that's not how it works, but think of it as I update the arrow only if it still points to the blue one. And that's the case with node one. It's still, the Zookeeper still points to the blue one, so we do a conditional update and point it to the green one. And then node 2 tries to do the same thing, but that fails because it does not point to the blue one anyway, anymore. And once this is done, the two nodes reply to their clients. Node 1 has succeeded and node 2 has failed. This is the protection that allows to survive two leaders doing updates at the same time. And when you start to think about it a bit more, it also allows <coughs> uh, to not have leaders at all. Because I can index on any replica and not cause any data loss. And I should try to index on the same replica because it will do less updates, less back and forth from S3. But if I index on the wrong one, it's still OK. And we'll see in the future work where that gets us. Um, 
We can also have concurrency on a serial node. Uh, in Solar, multiple threads, multiple requests can index into the same replica, and that's handled nicely. With what I described just previously, it would be handled nicely, but not very elegantly, because when parallel batches would be processed, only one of them would win and the other one would lose. And we do not want to do that because that negates the purpose of indexing in parallel. So the way uh, we did the way we did that um, is we let Solar and Lucene index in parallel, create the new files or the new segments. Sorry, I said it again. The new segments in parallel. But when we get to the stage of pushing, writing the data to the zero store and updating Zookeeper, we we do a critical section. So if you have, um, I do not have a diagram for that, but if you have two threads um, that created new files, each one, Lucene Solar managed it correctly, and if it th each thread created three files, we now have six files, six new files. The critical section will have one of the threads write all the six files to the S3. The other one will wait. The first one, let's assume it succeeded writing all these files, it will acknowledge to its client all these files. The second one then, it, its turn to write the changes to the shared storage. It will see the changes are already there. It will acknowledge to its client. So we have the parallel indexing, but we serialize the writing. The way queries work, the way queries work, um, <coughs> the data is either there or not there. If the data is not there because nobody accessed it yet, we have two options. We either fail the query or we wait and try to load it from the shared storage in order to be able to serve the query. Right now, the implementation fails the query, but it's not very complicated to, to move to the wait option. And then uh, there's a question, how often do we refresh uh, w whatever gets written to the shared storage by the leader when the replica that we are dealing with is a follower and not the leader? Right now, every new query triggers an async refresh. I mean. Uh, only one, not if you have a thousand queries. Anyway, it's not. Um, for now, we trigger refresh based on queries, but we could do it like existing replica types in Solar Cloud do it, based on a timer. It would be a, a trivial change. The benefits of the zero, that, uh, that approach, again, for the use case we're trying to address. Um, is uh, scaling compute and, uh, and storage independently. We can have a huge quantity of data, but if it is not accessed, we need very few compute nodes and storage on S3 is cheap, as opposed to adding nodes and nodes and nodes that do nothing just because we need their storage. And that <coughs> increases the efficiency because if we have very low activity, we can run it on a single Oh, you get the point, right? Um, <clears throat> scaling up does not increase the load on the existing nodes and replicas because the data is going to be fetched from S3, not from o already overloaded nodes. We delegate uh, durability to S3. And there is no way any team, any, especially any open source project in the world, is going to do something as durable as S3. I don't know if you read their papers, it's just crazy the work they did. So we lower the code complexity in Solar Cloud, not having to deal with durability. And we also avoid the, the duplication I talked about previously of having more copy than we think we have. <coughs> um, we lower not only the complexity of the durability, but also of knowing which is the most up-to-date copy 
uh, making sure we do not write on a non-up-to-date copy, propagating the changes. Um, all, all that logic can go away, basically. And uh, by having a single copy, the consistency uh, of the data is simpler. That's why we made the decision that the, the copy on, on the zero store, S3 and Zookeeper, is the source of truth, uh, simple decisions. The drawbacks of this approach is that uh, the nodes are stateless and they start empty, more or less. Um, <clears throat> in any case, the data of the indexes are not there. So we either preload them, and that's what we do internally, with the replicas, the shards we know uh, were accessed recently. And if we miss, or if we don't do it at all, um, we'll pay the high latency. I mean, the first query will fail the way it's implemented, and we will pay high latency for, for getting the data for the time it, it comes from S3. And there is also a performance impact in solar by doing a commit with every indexing batch. I admit we did not evaluate what is the impact of this in the big scheme of things consisting in writing and pushing to S3 before acknowledging to the client. So there is an overhead there. On the other hand, as opposed to normal solar cloud, we do not have to replicate to multiple nodes. So the single node operation is slower because there is a commit, but the overall operation, I don't know. There, we, we do not forward to other nodes. And in any case, when you have a remote storage, you need to persist something. You either persist the segments, sorry, the files of the index, as I explained, or you can, you have another option, which is called the update log or the transaction log in solar, where you persist basically what you index. But you need to persist something. Otherwise, if you say to the client, it's okay, and then the node goes down, uh, you lost data. The proposed contribution that is accessible if you you, you look for a branch with zero replicas in solar, Apache solar, there's only one. Um, it implements everything I talked about uh, to this point. And it is a cleaned up version of what Salesforce runs in production because we run solar eight and nine and, and that branch is based on main. But this is running at high scale uh, in multiple places in Salesforce. It's not a POC, it's not a toy, it's not perfect, but it is really running at high scale. I won't say what scale, but high scale. And what it enables, so the initial motivation was scale up, scale down, and make scheduling on the cluster easier. And, and, and the way the code is now, uh, it helps us in, in that direction. But it enables, and it took us a while to realize that, it enables much more. As I said, we can remove the shard leader elections. And for those of you who played with Solar Cloud and pushed it to, to overload, uh, the shard leader elections are interesting. So uh, that's nice to get rid of them. Also, Solar, the standalone mode of solar has something that is called transient cores, where the cores are not opened and they consume less memory and less threads. But that does not work with solar cloud because of the shard leader election. So once we removed shard leader election, stopped doing it, uh, we were able to use that mode again. And, and that helps scalability. So these are easy things to do on top of the branch as it is now. We could add them to the branch, it's just that I, I didn't update the branch in a few months. Uh, the, we are working on, but have not done yet, we can stop maintaining replica state altogether. Replica state is mostly, uh, um, a replica is either active or down. 
And when nodes restart, there is a big dance of all the replicas going down and going back up, etc. And um, we don't have to do that. If any replica can be accessed on a node and be loaded when needed, we can consider all the replicas are active. And the node will take care of making them active if they're not. And, and that also will simplify quite a bit of cluster state management in Solar Cloud. And the longer term thing is, um, is stop maintaining the cluster metadata as persisted data in Zookeeper. Basically, um, stop assigning replicas to shards and replicas to node in a persistent way, but live in the modern age and consider every node can serve any replica because it can go fetch it from the zero store and maintain that mapping in memory for affinity so you don't load everything everywhere. And if the cluster goes down and comes back up, the data is on the three anyway. You don't need to remember which node had it. The node is down anyway. And um, <clears throat> once we do that, we stop instantiating anything until it gets used. And then uh, if we talk scalability of unused data, I'm sorry, but that's a use case we have, then it's infinite because you only have maybe an entry that you have a collection in Zookeeper that you don't read. And the long-term vision is a cloud-native search cluster. It might not look like Solar Cloud. It might be a branch that has diverged too far away from Solar Cloud. I don't know what it will look like. I don't know where it will be. But if people are interested, uh, definitely something that can also be uh, open source. And we have uh, two minutes and 42 seconds. Questions? OK. Thank you. Thank you, Ilan. I'm sure we have a lot of questions. <laughs> a, a real lot of questions. So, okay. <coughs> Yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful talk. Uh, I really like the solution that you had for um, indexing and fixing the race condition. It's kind of like a compare and swap operation, yeah. Um, my question is, does it not matter which one that you like? You um, basically label as the current one that you want to use? Like in the slides, you marked um, the one on the left, for example, as the current one versus one on the right, like, yeah. It would matter if you have a high indexing rate. Mm -hmm then the, the one getting indexing is always up to date. And we put optimizations in there that you do not even check if it is up to date, if it supposes it is up to date, because it will fail if it's not up to date. So if you index always on the same replica, uh, you, you'll be on the most efficient path. If you index on the other one, it will either know it's not up to date and will have to get the data, or it will fail. It's only uh, efficiency of, you know, if we in index at very high rate on the leader replica, the follower replica likely does not need to fetch any update separately. So if you send a batch to the other one, it won't be up to date. And you would force an update. And if you send a batch to both of them all the time, then they, they will race with each other all the time. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the talk. I have uh, two questions. So first question is, uh, how do you handle uh, segment merging? Because as far as I understand, once the segments are created, then they are pushed to the, uh, to the remote storage. But at some point, what probably should happen is that there should be a process that downloads maybe small segments, merge them, and upload back to, to the... Yes. To I that's the first question. I'll answer first. OK. <clears throat> the merge happens on the node. So let's say a few segments or a set of files is merged. <clears throat> we push the new files to the shared storage. And I did not show all the details. But we also have a list of files that have disappeared that is maintained with the metadata. 
So we know that these files have disappeared. We do not delete them right away from the shared storage because maybe another replica is still reading a previous version of the shard. But eventually, later, they get deleted from the shared storage. Yes, but my question was a little bit different. So let's say there is, uh, there kicks in another merge process. This is how I understand it. And it should pick up some, some segments based on some criteria. So or let me say this way. With the strategy that you presented, isn't there a risk that those segments that will be pushed to the remote storage will be just a small one? in quote, quote, and will never be merged again into a larger one because they have already been offloaded from the, from the node to the shared storage, right? So No, no, the node does not know that there is shared storage. Solar uses the local disk. Uh, it does not know that anything is going to go away or come from elsewhere. So Solar is going to do whatever it wants to do to the files, and then their operation of pushing to the remote storage, does a diff, what is on the remote storage, what is locally, what are the additions, what are the suppressions. And so if Solar did a big merge and now we have a huge segment, we will push that huge segment. And if that causes three other segments to no longer be part of the current state, the commit point, we'll mark them for delete and eventually we will remove them from the shared storage. Yeah, and from that point, that large segment, can it be merged again with other large segments? Everything that can happen in solar will happen exactly the same way, exactly the same way. When you will see solar working on its local disk that came from S3, it will behave exactly the way it behaves normally. Okay, so that means that if the match should happen, then some node will go, grab those large segments to the local disk, merge them and push back again. Yes. Okay, great. And uh, uh, the, the second question was, uh, is there any mechanism that... Uh, so let's imagine this extreme uh, scenario. You have a uh, basically indexing, uh, indexing use case, you index a lot of data, and then you know that from, the, from some point you will be only doing searches. So maybe you don't need a lot of uh, nodes uh, for indexing. So what technically you can do, you can shut down the cluster completely because all the data is already in the remote storage and then you can start a new node with, let's say for extreme, single node and you can say, hey, search all the data. So what's the point of, so, so the, the node will probably go try to download all the segments and it will blow up, fail, right? Is, is, is this what will happen? Or is there some, some kind of mechanism that will say, hey, I cannot answer your question because I do not have enough room to download all the data? I, I think your question is more related to auto-scaling and is the cluster size appropriately for the traffic that you send at it? I did not touch on auto-scaling, but in your case, um, <clears throat> If you try to do, if you try to assign too many replicas to a node, even with normal soil cloud, it will fail. So yes, it will fail if you don't have the, the space to. Okay, thank you. We have a very quick question online. Uh, so thank you for introducing a novel technique to Solar. Do you have? any search benchmark available to compare zero replica with other replica types? Um, but I think you answered the question by saying that when the, the, the replica is copied locally, it behaves exactly as a, a normal replica. The, the, query, the query speed would be identical search. once the data has made yes. it to the node. The indexing speed will be slower. Yes, sure. The indexing okay. speed will be slower, uh, as I mentioned, because there is a commit. We are writing the files where mm -hmm. it's not something that you do with yes. every indexing batch. And we also push it to shared storage. Yeah, before acknowledging the... Before acknowledging. Yes, sure. But if you compare to any uh, remote storage solution mm -hmm. on... Um, on, on Solar Cloud, 
that remote storage solution will also push to remote storage. It will also hit multiple replicas first and then push from all of them. So it will be faster because no commit, but slower because uh, you do multiple things. Yes. But I don't have a, a benchmark. Okay, so the question was specifically for search. So, thank you. Okay, uh, so I guess it's time. Sorry, we will. Uh, I, I also had a bunch of questions for you, Ilan, but thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah.